You have seen room one come to life. It is time for us to move on to room two of Carrington House. In all my years of renovating and over 100 properties, I've never quite seen anything like this. Um, this room is quite visually disturbing and also in really bad condition. The floor falls away, the skirts are coming off the walls, there's chip rock on some walls over the render, there's render missing, there's holes through the walls into the hallway, electrical wiring is hanging everywhere, the window actually doesn't even have a frame around it, so it is a flapping pane of glass. And if I'm truly honest with you, I spent some time yesterday um, just reading the walls and the stories of the children that have written on these walls, and it's quite distressing. All right, Ferris, are you ready? Couldn't be more readier. Room two? Room two. Ready to rock? Couldn't get much worse than room one. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that before we demo, it could. Okay, I'll take it back, let's just see what happens here. <laughs> Done, let's go. <laughs> so this one is going to see quite a lot of changes in regard to its front facade. You're going to see it go from this boarded up, tiny, small window into this beautiful opening using some amazing, amazing products from Hume Doors, from Alspec. I mean, it is going to be a transformation. With that being said, let's crack open room two and get on with some demolition. This room's got the old white set walls, which is actually quite uh, not bad condition, except when I did that just there. It's a little bit higher. So, yeah. how, being so right, there's a thing. How do I, if someone was to walk in and go, I've got white set walls, there's rain falling off the wall over there, and there's bricks falling out of the wall, how do I know whether the rest of my walls are shot? Like, how could you give someone a quick tip? Quick tip? That's solid. That's come, come off the bricks. So does that mean the end of the world though? No. Now that the floors are up and in the back of the truck, we're going to crack open the front of that house. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it's not morning, it's afternoon. All right. Good afternoon. So, room two is officially demolished. <laughs> <laughs> Such an evil laugh because there, it's not good. It's not good. It is, well, I was about to say it's no worse than room one, but it is, it is worse than room one. Uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> this isn't feeling good. <laughs> so, no floors, no bearers, no joists. We had to take it all out. Yeah. And nothing solid on the walls. No, nothing solid. All the lime mortar render was trummy. Very terrible. I'm not feeling very happy right now. I ha I'm struggling to find something good to say. We re had to remove the, the bearers and the joists. Uh, it smelt really bad underneath there. Yeah. Um, the, we, one of the boys actually fell through the floor, uh, taking some of the stuff out. Uh, oh! Look, we're, they're working hard on it now, so... What's the plan of attack then? plan of attack is to rebuild a room. Literally. So, rebuild, rebuild the room. room. Again, we probably 
didn't expect it to be as bad as it is. But we can do it, right? We had oh, no the... foundations under the first room door, same. We have no floor under the first room, same. We have walls, we don't. We start from the ground up. Okay. Basically, so we get some everything uh, from the uh, termite protection. Oh, all right. Damp roof balls. Well, Ferris, Joyce. Game Floyd. on, I say Ferris. Game on. Game on. Game on. Are done. Are you happy with them? We are very happy with them. They're level. <laughs> They're level and you don't fall through them. But next is the walls. I'm really concerned to be honest. Look, we've got a bit of a challenge with the walls. Yeah. Uh, we don't know whether to recommend to chip off all the render that's on there. No. Uh, batten it out. Okay. Or frame in front of it. So what are you going to try? I think we might try battening it. Okay. Uh, which means we're going to run a little sort of uh, 40 by sort of 19 timbers up the wall yep. that we can actually stick the chip, chip rock, rock onto. On um, oh. That's the only downside to that is that. That's a lot of fixings, right? A lot of fixings, and that the mortar that's in there and the bricks are quite old. These ones. <laughs> the ones that are falling apart everywhere. Yeah. These are these ones. So what's the worst that can happen? Look, the screws don't take. Okay. Which is a bit of a problem. So it takes a we, bit longer. They, they do will we test take. it? We can test it. That's probably not a bad idea. Uh, look, the boys are just flicking out the lines and, and stuff on the on the floor to, for some references. Yep. Um, straighten yeah, it up. Straighten it up. And but we're just considering the heads, the, the door heads and everything that we've got cut out. Oh. Lots of stuff. What what we're going to do around that front wall, uh, being you know some soft old brickwork. Super soft brick. So maybe could we try one and then reconvene? And if it goes to pot, then look at framing it out. Yep. The downside of framing it out is you'll lose some space. Yeah. But losing a bit of space is better than the house falling down. I don't think it'll fall down. It could. It could. It won't fall far. No, it won't fall far, it'll just fall into the room, onto the new floor. Let's face it, if I didn't batten these walls out now, I would have painted them, patched them, I would have tried to hang something on them, and now we know they actually would have fallen to pieces. Similar to the struggles we had in room one, underneath where that front window or previous door had been, all of the foundations were completely gone. It was just rubble and some lime mortar which was falling apart. So we had to go about cleaning it up, forming it up and laying in a new concrete foundation so that what we're putting in here will last another 100 years. Even though the doors are matched to this room in room two, I promise you there is a little color surprise for you. I have the Auspect and Cotton Glass team on board to make the French doors for this amazing opening again. Can't beat it for security, privacy, and keeping out those creepy crawlies. Top tip guys, remember, make sure you seal up all your timbers and exposed edges before you hang your doors and get them exposed to the elements. Looks good now. I think we've done an amazing job. Yeah, it looks real good. So what are you thinking timeline wise? Um, well this might take us maybe a day and a half, two days to sheet set. Okay, so if you if I allowed Tuesday, Wednesday to sheet and set, yeah. would you be happy if the boys pitch a rail, chair rail panelled on Thursday? Yeah, that might matter to us. Okay. We'll just sand with the machine up to wherever and then just find sand wherever it's not, because we they're gonna have you're not putting any um, dado board for you, are you? Yeah, so there's chair rail, picture rail, yeah. and then there'll be panelling below the chair. So I would say leave the panelling off below the chair, because that'd be a pain in the ass to sand around. 
Whereas if we just had a chair around, pitch around, and they did all the door trims. One, two, and a half. Go follow that. It's not big. Yeah, yeah, you have to. You yeah. can't. Corners. You can't corners over paint. No. It doesn't stick as well. So, we probably need to know that before I give my paint as the red light. Yeah. But well, even if you said Tuesday, that's given them eight days to get the corners in. And it's a stop alert. Okay. Hunter Lining Projects have come in to pin these gyp rock sheets. They then spend their time taping in with a base coat. And it's really important that you then wait 24 hours before you do your joins with your second coat. Then Bones pops back in for a beautiful final coat before he sands off and hands it back over. Man, I love a freshly chip rock room. Do you know what? It's been around so long. Like, my dad's dad used it, my dad used it, I use it. You just can't go past it. Love it. I'm so excited that we are up to the stage of all of the beautiful trims going in. You guys know I am a fan, where possible, about really considering the environment. So the fact that I get to install FSC certified real timber trims is just such a treat. So Regan, this is an art, realistically. I am not the best at mitering corners in any way, shape or form. So I'm purely a labourer in this process. So remember, if you didn't catch room one, that each of those panels is 100mm off the skirt, down from the chair, and 100mm apart from one another. And then the sizes of the rectangles vary between 600 and 700, depending on how many panels we need to fit into the wall. Look what I have in here, wrapped in a blanket. Oh yeah. So these guys, again, they were a bit delayed, these cornices. And so the Hunter Lining Projects team are having to come back and start to hang them now. But I tell you what, one of the upsides of room two is at least the walls are new in there. So it's brand new gyp rock. And at least this time, we know that those walls are solid, we know they're strong, we know exactly where the battens are, which means hanging these beautiful, heavy, white set cornices is going to be so much easier. Spray. Spray and undercoat. Undercoat today, yeah. Okay, cool. Make it sight safe. We're going to patch the holes. Then we're going to sand, sand, sand. Yep. And then clean so clean that we up. would be happy. That's right. All right. Well, let's get to it. Let's do it. Dan to do some enamel undercoat spraying on the cornices and on the ceiling rows with my QT5 gun from Arista Spray and I am heading home to shower off and clean off. Now we do this on all of the surfaces and then we do the gapping. Remember the top tip though, always gap after you've primed and then sand again. Dan and I 
have chosen to spray this room as well. With this beautiful paneling in here, it does make it quicker, easier, and the finish is amazing. In saying that though, we are returning to old fashioned paintbrush when it comes to the enamels on all of the trims, including the skirt, the chair rail, and the picture rails. So similar to what we did in room one, I'm going for really simple electrical and lighting plan in here. I have put in three extra GPOs, so three extra power points with USBs on them, because after this is a bedroom, I might turn it into a communal office for my team. Now up on the ceiling, you know I'm a fan of fresh air and ventilation. I have a gorgeous wide blade fan that I got from Beacon Lighting and I've spaced out dimmable LEDs nice and wide so we never ever get a strobe effect. And for me, that is enough in here. Are you ready? Ready to go. I'm pumped. So I did some research because as my son always tells me, mum, why don't you read instructions? Mm -hmm. This is a pre-pasted wallpaper. I've never used one of these before. Yeah, neither have I. So that'll be exciting. I usually put glue on the wall or use the ones that are like contact. Mm -hmm. So I did some research and it came with a rollout thing. Mm -hmm. Apparently this has got like dry glue. Yep. See, you're such a professional. I'm like, it's got dry <laughs> glue and you're like, um, it's apparently got dry glue on it. So our first sheets are most important, obviously. Mm -hmm. The distance between chair and picture is 173 or 1730 for you guys. Yep. So I've done it 20 mil longer either side. Yep. And I have a plumb line on the wall because I'm really nervous because if this isn't straight. Yep. It's going to look pretty ordinary. <laughs> so we're going to make. It is, hey, yep. we're going to make sure it's straight. So. I figured this is good though, because there's two of us. Because yep. usually I'm like laying more paper or putting more paper up going, yep. but one of us can put up, I'm nervous, yep. and one of us can make sure it's plumb. I'll go high. You go high? Yeah, I'll go high. Okay, so I read the instructions. It said measure and cut, so I've measured, I've drawn my line. Yep. I measured down both sides of the paper so I knew it was square at the end. Yep. Although, because we're going to cut on wall, it's not as important. Mm -hmm. And then it said, spray. Wait till you see this. We've got matching spray guns. Yes. It then said, spray an even coat, fold it onto itself, and mm -hmm. allow, apparently, the professional term is booking. Mm -hmm. Allow it to moisten the glue and expand and relax the paper. Yep. Sounds right to me. Oh. Okay, good. I'm glad you know what you're doing. So, first thing we're going to do is I have a line down here somewhere. Yep. Cardboard's helpful. Oh my gosh, it's so helpful. I was telling Dan previously, guys, that I'm usually a very hobby wallpaperer because it's certainly not my craft, and I always cut the wallpaper on the plastic um, table which means that I blunt my knife every stroke. Okay. All right. I'm sure we're not. We've got the mist on, yeah. Okay. So apparently we just missed it up. Yeah, I'd say not too wet. Just want to get a nice little... What happens, do you reckon, if we go too wet? Probably gets all... Mushy? Yeah, mushy and be harder to work with, I reckon. Okay. We can always apply more where we can't apply less. Oh my god, you're such a common sense. So it says fold it onto itself. Both sides, right? Yeah, apparently. Yep. And we wait three minutes so the water doesn't dry out. Ready? So apparently we just. Wait. Apparently we wait. Yep. Yeah. Close enough. If I had my spirit level. <laughs> There you go, Siri, we're good to go. Okay. Okay, let me get that done for you. Okay, tall person. Okay, so match the right up with the line on your right hand. Yep. Go further to your left. How good is it having a tall person?
It looks like a wing. So we are wing. I'm feeling a little bit. Yeah. way too much fun with Dan and I've run out of time but I have to clear out of that space now as Cameron's going to be coming in and laying the beautiful vinyl plank floors again. That is right, I'm continuing the floors from room one throughout the entire front section of this house and the reason being, one, they look great, two, they're amazingly hard wearing and they're super easy to clean and the fact that room one has survived being the only finished room on this worksite with all of the mess is a true testimony to how hardy they are. Stay with us for the next episode of the Room 2 Reveal to make sure you get to see all of this. Thanks for joining me. Did you know I wrote a book all about creating wealth through renovating property? I've popped a link below in the description so you can check it out. See you next time and enjoy.